Addiction Podcast, a podcast where we go one-on-one with fiction creators, such as authors, filmmakers, actors, songwriters, and more. Each episode, we get the inside scoop on our guests' creative process, the ups and downs of their industries, and our guests also give out tips and tricks that help them become successful. And now, let's jump into the episode with your host, Chris C.L. Lowry. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the Fiction Addiction Podcast. My next guest is an author and creator of a story called Resenio Blanket. He started writing from stress and also encouragement, and it blossomed into a website and a story. He also learned how to do graphic design, 3D design, and animation. Currently, his story, Resenio Blanket, is running a contest until May 15th, for all storytellers, and there's a cash prize. Ladies and gentlemen, Jakari Tucker. Jakari, what's going on, bro? Nothing much, man. Very excited. Man. Very excited. How you doing, man? I'm good. Trying to trying to stay healthy during this quarantine. Right. I was about to ask you that. That's about to be my first question. So, how like what's what's your life like now during this global pandemic? The funny thing is, it hasn't changed much. I actually, really? I, I work for FedEx, so we're still. Are oh, you still out here? <laughs> he's, still out here. <laughs> he's still at work, so it's all the same. I'm hoping they pass one of these stimulus bills to give all essential workers a raise. So we'll yeah, see about that. Pay, man. Exactly. Now, how has it been for you, uh, like going back home after being out working? You got to go through like a, like a crazy cleaning process before you step back in the house to make sure you don't bring like nothing from work in back home. No, not really. Um, the, the, at, at work, we're actually, um, doing a lot of stuff. Uh, we use oh, really? a whole bunch of, we got a whole bunch of hand sanitizer, a whole bunch of like cleaning products. We wear gloves, we wear a mask. So like we're, we're suited and booted. I don't think anything, <laughs> I don't think any part of my body is is like exposed because we wear where I work at. I wear a long sleeve shirt. And so I have long sleeve shirts on. I have um, gloves on. I have a mask on. So really, there's barely anything exposed on my body. I even wear glasses. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you, you, you don't get concerned, like still making the, the, like the deliveries with people. I, how are you? How concerned are you about this virus in terms of contracting it? I, I work in I work in the office environment, so I'm I'm not. Oh, you ain't even out here. No, I'm not. I'm, oh, you lucky? I'm a little bit better than the than the drivers are doing right now, but <laughs> yeah. So how are you? How are you staying creative during this time? Um, obviously you're still working, so you still gotta figure time out to, to keep writing and stuff like that. So how, how, what are some of the things you're doing to stay creative? So some of the things I'm doing to stay creative, uh, it's, it's really hard, um, especially with the stress of the coronavirus and, and you might get exposed or do I do this right or do I do that right? So what I try to do is I try to, like, for instance, I made the, the writing contest. So I'm mm. trying to involve other people and that also gives me motivation to stay on top of my game because if somebody comes and asks me a question i need to know what what's going on so right, right. I, I try and create more stuff for me to do so that way i stay on top of my game i actually um i'm supposed to be releasing my my uh what is it my may updates and i didn't do it and so i have to i put another date on it so i, I gotta get on that and i have to release it by uh monday so Dang. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I got work this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So so tell us more about the beginning of your writing journey. Obviously, um, as as mentioned earlier, stress played a lot into your writing journey itself. So what take me back to the beginning, like when it all started. So when I when I first decided to start, you know, going hard on this story. Um, it was at a time where I was just stressed out. I, I, I didn't know what I was going to do with my job. I didn't know if I was going to stay or going to leave. I had a, a manager that was like terrible. 
and he really didn't know what he was doing. And we were going back and forth and I had just bought a house. And so I was like, I was stressed out. And right. one of the things that my girlfriend actually um, encouraged me to do was to start writing. And mm. so as I'm, as I'm writing, I, I think about like what to write about. And I have in a notebook, it's a, a digital notebook um, on an app called uh, OneNote. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I had started some stuff a long time ago, like in, in 2011, um, about a story of kind of this nature that I'm doing. And I, I went back there and I started from there. And then from there, um, I, I actually ended up with a character. The first ever character made for my story, Resident Blanket, was Jay's Love. Wow. Yeah. Now, creating this character, how, how did he come about at, the, at this time? So that character is, is really um, a reflection of me. Um, mm. Well, he was created as a reflection of me. Right now, I would say he's probably not so much anymore, but that's where he came from. So a lot of the, um, the motivation in the beginning was I was taking it from my own personal experiences and everything, but then it just kept growing. So at this point, none of these people, none of these characters are, are kind of related to me at all. So. So did you always have like a passion for writing or reading when you were growing up as a kid? A little bit. I would say more so a passion for writing than reading. Um, I like I like good stories. I like um, fantasy stories. I like um, kind of losing yourself in, in your own universe. Um, right, right. I wasn't I was never really a big reader, but I always had writing as an outlet, which is it's kind of weird because usually writers are big readers. But me, I'm I'm not a big reader. I'm I'm actually more so a, a big uh, movie buff. So, mm. now, so when we when we talk about this time, obviously, you say you had a lot going on. You had to stress. Uh, your girlfriend made the recommendation: start writing. Uh huh. How much of a relief was that out outlet in terms of um, getting some of the stress onto this paper, or get, just getting some of the stress relief? So for for me, when when I'm going through stress, it's good to find a distraction. And this was that distraction. And it it, it lasted so long to the point where it actually became something. So I would just go off just writing, writing, writing. And next thing you know, it's like three, three months later. Right. And the stress is starting to die down because I'm getting into different situations. I actually got promoted. They moved me to a different oh, store. Wow. Yeah. It, it, so everything kind of changed. And so this was as I, as I was building it, it had become something by the time the stress started dying down. Now, how did you stay on course? Like, how did you stay motivated to continue the writing? Um, Obviously, while the stress died down, what was that? What was that thing that kept you motivated since the stress was being relieved? I wanted to provide other people with the same kind of relief that mm. that I had. So I'm I'm actually trying to design this story to kind of be something that other people can add to, and I don't have to be the the main writer to it so other people can add their own stories and add their own side stuff and blah 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 and then next thing you know your story is becoming a movie or whatever or it's right. a, a a big thing in connection with what i'm building right that's dope yeah now when you begin taking your writing serious when you obviously you started using it as an outlet, but at some point you realize, like, oh, I, I got something here. You know what I mean? I got something I want to share with people. I got something that if I share with people, it can, it can help them the way it helped me. Um, uh -huh. You know what I mean? So what did you envision for this journey once you realized, hey, I have something here? What was the vision in terms of publishing it, in terms of like uh, pushing it and putting it out there? 
the the journey was actually pretty scary because I didn't know what I was doing. Like I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not a, like a traditional writer. I'm not like uh like this this grand poobah who was like just knew everything about writing and and like telling stories and where to publish and all that. I didn't know none of that. So my girlfriend actually encouraged a lot of it and encouraged me to keep going. And so I was just like, okay, what do I got to do next? Okay. What do I got to do right. next? And and one of the things you got to do is if, if the next step to storytelling is you got to put yourself out there. Mm. And, and so I created a, um, a, a, a Instagram page. I created a website and I started putting stuff on there. And next thing you know, it it turned into the website that it is today. It has a lot of different stuff, a lot of lore pieces, a lot of um, a little bit of story being built. And my Instagram following had, you know, built up a little bit. I need to get back on that. But uh, yeah, it's it's it, it kept going. That's what you got to do, man. It's scary, though. Yeah. <laughs> so now, now, how is that now looking back at how far? Obviously, like you said, you. You you start out with a website, but now it's grown. For those who are going to go check it out, you're going to see stories. You're going to see characters. You're going to see great designs, great layout for the website. So how was that going from the beginning and growing it to what it's become now? So the the website growing, man. Um, like I said, I didn't know what I was doing, so I was I was putting stuff up there and kind of like I had to take some down and put some more up and kind of experiment in in, in what works and what mm. kind of didn't work cuz right now you know I have a like update uh section a story section a shop I even have music on the on the website now and I have like a lore section but before it was just the home page and just um a section where readers could actually um, go and kind of interact as I was telling the story or creating the story, which is actually one of my goals. I can, I, we can talk about that um, if you Absolutely. want to. Um, Absolutely. So initially when I, when I started um, my, my vision is to have like um, a, a writing website where you have these storytellers and then you have the ability to like if you're a really big fan of these storytellers, you can go and actually watch them as they're building and writing the story and see their process and comment on what what they're doing. Um, the only mm. thing I, I couldn't work out was how to prevent people from, you know, taking the story and then like trying to sell it off as their own or right or yeah like right yeah exactly when it it, because it's not a finished product at that point so right and that's that's the that was one of the tricky parts so i had to actually take that down um because i was afraid of that but at that point my site was still in a like a very young stage so i didn't have to like worry about a whole bunch of people coming to the site and you know somebody potentially stealing what I'm doing and running off with it. Right. Now, do you have a, I mean, I know you mentioned one note, but do you have a specific writing routine, like a certain type of setup you have certain type of snacks or anything you got? <laughs> like, <how> many, like, <laughs> anything? <laughs> so what, what I like to do is I like to first, I like to get some stuff on, on a page. Right. And I want to I want to start off with like almost like bullet points, like this person is going to survive and do something or this person is going to wake up angry and then they're going to go here and then they're going to go do something else. But like it's, it, it would be more so like like an overall kind of like bullet points, a step by step. And then. I go back in and start to get more descriptive. Like, what did they say? Mm -hmm. Who were they talking to? Blah, blah, blah. And then it, then I go from there and then I go into, um, uh, I would normally, I, before I went to an editor, but now I go to a, um, 
what is it? Um, Grammarly, which is like a, oh, yeah. a, a auto, yeah, program, a auto editor, which is a lot cheaper. And I feel like it's more effective on catching like grammatical errors and syntax errors. And then mm-hmm. f- from there, I post it um, in a group that I'm in to kind of see, to kind of get a little, a couple pre readers and see what they think of it and then go on from there into publishing or kind of rewriting from there. That's crazy because um, the stuff you mentioned, you're, you're taking those steps. A lot, a lot of, a lot of writers, um, they talk about the expenses that go along with finding the editor. So some people choose just to put their stuff out, Mm -hmm. um, self edit and put yourself, put their stuff out. You actually are taking few steps before you even go to a publisher. How important are those steps like with the Grammarly and with the, the group you're in of having those extra eyes on it? So my, my background is actually in business. So I am more business minded than um, probably your average writer. Mm. So, so I can, I know that I need to, you know, make sure it looks, it looks and sounds good first. I need to make sure my overhead is low. So when I was working with a, um, a, a, a editor and they charged me X amount, I go, is there a cheaper way to do this? Then I, I search on the internet and turns out, yes, there is a cheaper way to, to get you an editor. If you're like, churning out a whole bunch of material, right? You'd have to go to the editor and spend like a hundred, two hundred dollars every single time. Where if you had this program, you could be it could be a hundred dollars for the whole year, right? And right. you can just yeah. get all of your stuff edited. And then from there, you just gotta find people like pre-readers. There's plenty of people on the internet who will read your stuff if you just ask them. Um mm. and then they'll just just you can't you can't be um afraid of critique you have to mm. you have to want it you have to want that critique cuz some people when you when you start getting a little bit of critique it it may be a little negative but you got to you got to be able to kind of grab uh specific things that are actually telling you something cuz if you mm. if you get five pre-readers and they all tell you the same thing and you may not like it but if they're all telling you the same thing then it needs to be fixed whether you like it or not right absolutely yeah so how is life as an independent author for you right now uh it's it's tough because um i i i really feel like i need more help um, because I, I, I do everything. I do the website, I do the writing, I do the lower pieces, I do the shop, I, I do everything. And so uh, I really need a little bit more help. That's it. So that's what makes it so tough for me. Um, and I don't have the, I don't have the time because I have a, a full-time job and I'm, right. I'm in management. So I can't like, it's not so simple as to, you know, um, request less hours or anything and i have a mortgage so i gotta i, I gotta work so oh absolutely <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what do you think separates your writing from other authors um my writing from other authors i would say the story my my yeah. my story is going to be a little bit different. So, for one, um, the, it's it's going to have a little bit of sex appeal, which is which is one of my goals. I want I want my story to be a little bit edgy. Um, if you if you notice, if you go to my site, a lot of my characters right now, but the plan is to get away from this. Um, a lot of my characters have a little bit of sex appeal to them, right? And then from there, I also want it to be to have a little bit of a hip hop flair, right? So I, there's, I actually have um, my cousin. Uh, he created some some music 
and I actually put it on my website. And so anybody who's like reading, I encourage them to, while you're reading my story, go into this music um, area. It's called RB Music and just listen to the music while you read. Uh, it's got some pretty cool beats. Uh, it's not no, nobody's rapping. Um, so you don't got to worry about, oh, man, this guy is trash or this guy, <laughs> he's trying to promote. <laughs> he's trying to promote these these rappers. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. It's just some cool beats that you can listen to while you read. It, it kind of it kind of brings the um, kind of the tone of of what I'm trying to do. Uh, if you kind of listen to uh, the type of beats that we have. Uh, it kind of brings like, oh, OK, so this this story kind of has a little bit of uh, like a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of edge to it, you know? Mm. Yeah. That's crazy. Shout, shout out to Willie Wallet. <laughs> I'm going to tell him, too. He's going he gonna to listen to your podcast. <laughs> That's how he got a shout out. <laughs> um, you seem so. For someone obviously working on the story, you seem, and it might be the business, it might be because you are business minded um, first, first and foremost, but you seem ahead of the pack when it comes to putting out your first story. You know what I mean? You, you're thinking, if you take a, an author that's writing their first story, uh -huh. they're not thinking about everything you're thinking about. They're not thinking about the website. Having it, having the characters, having the interaction between readers and writers, bringing in multiple writers, giving them this, the, an outlet to create um, a story in this world that you created, mm -hmm. and then having the music undertones that you can actually listen to when, when reading. Mm -hmm. So, wh wh where's that mindset? And obviously, I know it's it's business, but a lot of it, it's a lot of creativity in that as well. So, what what went into everything? you put together as it comes out now like what was what was the mindset when creating this how did you know this is exactly what i wanted i wanted the music for this you know what i mean uh -huh. how did you know you wanted everything for this story because I, I i wanted i wanted to do it right so we we actually even owned the trademark to the um to the logo so i'm thinking like you know like five, 10 years down the road, if it actually turns into something right now, it could be a hobby, but if the right group or the right, right person picks it up and it like turns into this big thing, I need to have some kind of, you know, some kind of plan, some kind of ownership, some, uh, some right. kind of state. Right. Exactly. And so <laughs> the, the business minded part of me is like, you got to make sure it's, it's correct and it's good and it's, you know, it's right. And then I also have like a, I did, I had a minor in marketing. So image is, has always been a, a, a big thing with me when it comes to marketing, um, even self promotion, I would always say your image is a big deal, right? How you present yourself, what kind of clothes do you wear? How do you look, you know, um, these, these are things that, can give you an edge in a negotiation or an edge when you're talking to somebody or make somebody a little more lax. Like if you present yourself, even if you are, present yourself and you come off as like an attractive person, right? Attractive people get treated differently from people who look, you know, if you come to a meeting and you're looking bummy, right? They're, they're not going to take you seriously. They're not going to treat you the same. Oh, and, yeah, right. <laughs> and so I wanted, I wanted to, present this thing like it has to look like it can go it can take that next step so when when or if somebody the right person sees it they can be like okay this is ready for the next step right i have to i have to be ready for it and and that was where my mind has been focused on in order to um present this to the world. Hmm. It's crazy. Now you mentioned trademark. Oh man, I'm so glad you did because there's so <laughs> many people that just don't understand the importance of trademarking and copywriting. So if you could just in your own words, explain to like a listener out there, a writer out there who's just 
has no understanding of why you trademarked it. They heard this and they understand. They say, okay, he said he trademarked his logo, mm-hmm. and they just don't know why or how to go about it. Can you break that down off the why you trademarked it and how you went about trademarking your logo? So the trademark was actually a a very long process. It took way longer than I thought it was. But my main goal with with the trademark is I don't want nobody coming to my stuff and seeing that, you know, oh, this is this is this looks good or, you know, I like this. Let me just take it. Right. Every single almost every single picture you see on my site has the logo on it. So if if they take it then they can potentially be sued, especially if they go off and make a million dollars from something I did. I need my cut. And right. so <laughs> that's, that's how I look at it. The boss got to get his cut. So if you want to, <laughs> if you want to make any kind of money off residual blanket, you, you, you got to give me a cut. And so the, the trademark is so important to it because any any anything anything that has that logo on it is Rosino blanket. It is authentic and it can be um, enforced by Rosino blanket, me or my girlfriend or anybody who, because um, she kind of has has a share in it. But anybody uh, that kind of is within the Rosino blanket umbrella, right? It can be enforced. And we can, you know, take legal action on it. So we don't have to kind of worry about somebody taking images, taking, you know, stuff from our website because we have kind of the protection of the government that, to say, you know, right. if you take this, it can be potentially be a problem. Um, but as far as like copywriting, it's very important to get your stuff copywritten. Um, but Writers do have a little bit of a uh, wiggle room with that because anything you, you write and publish can be, um, can, can be protected. And so every, everything I publish is published on my site. And so you, as a writer, you have protections under, um, I, I, it's, it's a law. I forget the exact law, but anything you write, belongs to the writer and anything you kind of draw, it belongs to the drawer, but they're, they're like some, some kind of, uh, uh, loopholes in it. So you definitely want to make sure your stuff is copywritten and you want to make sure your stuff is, um, you're, you, at least at the very least, you have the trademark to your logo is, is very important. Now, how did you go about doing your trademark? Did you do it yourself or did you go through an attorney? I did it myself, actually. You got the business, man. You, know, <laughs> you got the business background. So you're saving a lot of money on that. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, man, this stuff costs a lot of money. If you go through an attorney, a whole lot. you're going to be spending a couple grand at least. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing is, if you just read, right, and you do the research, you can actually go through it and maybe spend a couple hundred versus a couple, yep. uh, a couple thousand. Like you, you need to read, you need to ask people, you need to speak to people because you'd be surprised what kind of information you get. If you just go, Hey man, I need, I'm trying to get a trademark. Is there, is there a way or anything, any way I can go about this and, and not have to spend a billion dollars? Yeah. Right. First off, do your, <laughs> do your research. That's first. Do your research and make sure you know how to do it and ask the correct questions. So mm. so my my trademark had like ran into like a couple roadblocks. And when the uh, trademark company had reached out to me, um, I asked specific questions as to like what exactly I need to do. How do I need to do it? I went and Googled it and and went and Googled um, like uh, uh, examples and I solved it and actually got my trademark through. And now it's trademarked for, I believe it holds up for 10 years until you have to redo it. Um, but yeah, it, it was, 
it, it took like a, a year or something to, to actually get the trademark. And I was scared to like put anything up on my website. I was scared to like, right. I was like, man, I don't want nobody stealing my stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm in the process. Yeah, like. exactly. <laughs> Someone might go yeah. to the, to the, to trademark people and be like, that's mine. And, and right exactly yeah and then you got a whole nother battle on your hands <laughs> exactly so i'm i'm over here like man i don't know if i should do put start building this website and blah 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 until this trademark is done so i'm i was a little scared man so how, how did you get into graphic design graphic design it came so it's crazy because this doing all of this writing and stuff and being business minded and trying to save money where I could, it it led me to being like, man, I, I was working with uh, uh, I was working with uh, um, artists who were who were drawing stuff for me. And if you see on my on my first on the first issue, there is like it's drawing and it's not three D, right? And so mm -hmm. from there, I was like, man, that cost me a lot of money. And, and then I was like, hmm, what can I do? I don't really know how to draw very well. I, I even bought like one of those uh, uh, pads that you draw on. Oh, the and, digital ones? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. and I'm about to start drawing this myself. And then I, I, I can't draw, man. And so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, is there another way I can do this? And then I ran into like a 3D kind of um, art kind of section. And so I'm like, I can do, I'm, I might be able to do that. And I started using a program called Daz Studio. And I started creating characters, right? And I was like, oh, I can, I can do this. This is a little bit easier. And so I started like creating characters. And then from there, you start like adding stuff to the photos and start, um, you know, kind of graphically enhancing them. And, and you start building like, uh, uh, um, like different kind of graphics and, and different kind of um, images to enhance what you're doing. And, and you go from, from trying to draw to 3d design to learning graphic design to learning all kind of stuff. Mm. That's crazy. So did you, you design all the characters like on the website and everything? Yeah. I design all That's of them. That's crazy. Yeah. There's, there's even, there's more than that. There, those are just the ones that uh, I posted, but there's, there's okay. a, there's a lot more than that. Yo, if it's a blueprint of being an entrepreneur and making sure you uh save as much money as you can, <laughs> dude, you got it. <laughs> Cause everything you did, that's money, man. That's a lot of yo, 3D animation. Uh-huh. That's a <laughs> lot of money that you had to put into that. Man, I'm telling you, I was I was talking to some of these 3D designers. And like what they would charge you for one of these characters is bonkers, man. Right. It is be able to afford one, and that's it. <laughs> exactly, man. Stick with one character, and that's it, man. We roll. <laughs> yeah, man. And so I even had to go through a process of taking everything that I had that was 2D and started turning it into 3D. Like all the characters mm -hmm. that I, the Jay's and Amy, the the first two original characters, they were in 2D, and so I had to go through the process of turning them into an an actual 3d character and one of the, one of the beauties about you know kind of having the control of creating your own characters is that you actually get their image that the image that's in your head can come out perfect when right. you're the one doing right. it and so yeah. i i actually enjoy the process of it because i can what's in my head comes out and I'm like, oh, okay, that looks, that looks good. That right. looks good. And Dang. if you, even if you go on my timeline um, on Instagram, right. You can see, I, I left the pictures up. You can see where I transitioned from 2d to, to 3d and 
where the the skill transitions from, right? You can see the first character I ever did. I, I left the picture up where she's like, she's she has like a glossy, overly glossed arms, and then her body is like matte, and it was like it was weird. And then it goes, it gets better. And then the next month it gets a little bit better. And then the next month it gets a little bit better. And you start to learn a whole bunch of tricks and, and, and what all these other 3D artists are doing. And it turns out pretty cool. Oh, that's crazy. Now, your story, Arsenio mm-hmm. Blanket. So this story obviously is so unique. Man, it's 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 so dope. So it is a story about different views of people of a planet named Juno. Uh-huh. Each character has their own unique story and experiences as they navigate the world, and then readers get to witness the trials as the story unfolds through action, adventure, sci-fi, and fantasy themes. And as we explore each character's viewpoint, we discover what makes the planet of Juno so unique. So Resinio Blanket, you designed it to be a massive story that is designed to be told by many different people. Therefore, it takes place in many different periods and many different locations. Each tale will take the readers through scenes of action, adventure, fantasy, and sci-fi with bits of comedy and sex appeal sprinkled in. So your vision was to create a world where no kind of story is off limits where the existence of good and evil is always a complicated matter as it is in life. So break down Resinio Blanket even more than that, because I think that's dope. I think that's creative. I think it's innovative. And I think it's going to be, uh, I think that's going to be a trendsetter. Uh, you know what I mean? Once people get a hold of this and, and see how dope of a project it can be when people come together. So uh-huh. break down Resinio Blanket even more. Let, let's start with the name. So the name. So originally the name uh, of what I was doing was called World Restart. Right. And, and the World Restart is basically a, a great disaster happens and maybe 90 percent of the population is wiped out. So everything uh-huh. has to kind of begin again. But. World Restart wasn't like a cool enough name for me. Um, So I looked up like prefixes and suffixes and and a whole bunch of stuff. And so the re at the beginning, it it stands for again. Sin, I believe, is a connecting um, uh, of... uh, something I, I forget what the sin means but neo is actually uh means new so it's a connecting of new and old and blanket mm-hmm. means world well not means it, it's 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 a reflection of a world so resinio blanket it's the new and the old coming together in the world and it it, it can it, it makes a for a volatile situation so um what happens in Resinio Blanket is that there are two events uh, that happen that our world restarts. So civilizations build, civilization builds, and then it is destroyed, and then it builds up again, and then it's, it's destroyed again. And now it's, has, it, it's, it's built up again, and now we're at a point where it's about to get volatile. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, so it's it's... It's pretty crazy. Um, once I once we start getting into talking about it, it's it's a it's a pretty crazy story because you're going to have you're going to have some technology that was that survived from previous civil, civilizations. You're going to have um, a world that is uh, in flux because uh, a previous civil, civilization what what happened it the the destruction of that previous civilization created a world where the environment is um very uh volatile so it's constantly raining it's uh the creatures are kind of like uh, there there are monsters around there 
there are only spots, there are only good spots where um, people can last. But as the climate starts to um, uh, deteriorate, not deteriorate, um, as the climate starts to get better, things start expanding. People start to go out and explore. And you have kind of this world where a lot of different things are starting to clash. You got technology on one end where you know, people have cybernetics and, and all this crazy stuff. Uh, and then you have on another end, people who are doing kind of genetic modifications, um, which is the group wow. called, yeah, which is a group called um, uh, uh, the Holloway conglomerate. And they're, they're doing a whole bunch of genetic altercation alterations and they're like changing people and enhancing people. And then you also have, um, another group which are kind of like um power kind of power wielders i would say but it's not it's none of it is going to be like how it is in the movies so you're not going to see one person bust into a room and take out a thousand people right (laughs) (laughs) I do not yeah, want I'm that. With you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it, it. Won't happen like that. So if a person is going to go into a room and decide he's going to like try and take out a whole army, he's probably going to be dead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I don't. I'm, I'm, I want to get away from the fakeness of that, and I want to kind of bring some kind of uh, down to earth point of view. So these people who are going to be wielding all these powers, right? There are going to be consequences to it. So from what I've been reading and and talking to people about who believe in that kind of stuff with ever, with every kind of um, incantation or whatever you have at spell, there is an equal um, cost to it. So if you're going to do something that's going to like, massively move a person it it may make you very tired right Mm -hmm. so if if you're going to do all these you know crazy actions maybe you combust somebody and light them on fire well you may just faint right right so if if you're in the middle of a battle and you do that and you faint you're probably going to end up dead right (laughs) <laughs> so, so it's it's You're killing all the heroes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a lot of characters, so that's one of the benefits I have because I'm the one creating all the characters. <laughs> You're probably going to see some of them get killed off because they do something stupid. Damn. Yeah. Now, how much research went into creating this world? A lot, a whole lot, because I had to. Like with every new thing I I was adding, I had to make sure it made sense for the world. And since I'm trying to keep it um, kind of realistic, um, knowing that, you know, fantasy isn't real, uh, I'm trying to keep it kind of realistic. Um, So I had to do I had to do a lot of research um, to make it seem like it is possible. Like, Mm. is it possible to genetically enhance somebody? Well, they're working on it right now. They're certainly creating babies (laughs) that are genetically enhanced. They're, they even have like in-home kits where you can go and try and alter your own DNA. Right. And so, okay, that is possible. So we can bring that into the story. Okay. Now, are we making cybernetic, like, implants and cybernetic arms and stuff like that yeah so could it could there possibly be some people who have like cybernetics yeah and then you go into you know what's going on with the environment of residual blanket so we based it we even based that off of um uh, uh a period in like the jurassic times it's called the carnal pluvian period where it's like the environment is it's like raining all the time and it's very mm-hmm. wet and so the to go out and explore is a very dangerous thing and as the environment starts to get better um you have all these 
powers vying for this extra space. And so you're starting to see like all the crazy stuff that they've been doing is starting to come to light. And they're as they're trying to take all this territory and trying and, and they're starting to to collide with each other. Because all, all these different groups are gonna gonna collide with each other. Now what goes through your mind when you're creating these characters because so much creativity goes into them. They're their characters, obviously. Well, the one thing I noticed was the diversity, which I was like, wow, that's, mm-hmm. that's dope. There was a lot of diversity in the characters. You had characters with scales. You had um, the one character, he's like, he has like a wolf shaped face, but with the elf ears. It's, it's so <laughs> much creativity in the character, and it's dope. So, what, how do you get in that space? How do you know how you're going to create the characters in, in what fashion you're going to create them? Because they, they're different from each other as well. Uh huh. So I, I want them to be different, right? So nobody has this much diversity. Nobody has a cast full of, you know, all these dark skinned characters. Nobody has a cast full right. of um, uh, like such diversity, like characters have gold teeth. All these there's characters with a whole bunch of tattoos and like edgy piercings and stuff. So my my process is I want to make them different. Like I, I want to make, I want to make them so like dramatically different from each other that they they you can kind of um, like pick a character and be like that is my character and I'm going to ride with that character, and so like the character you mentioned, um, his name is Heavy, and he actually like has this 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 dog like face, and he was actually a creation of. The another character, which is Tetris um, Holloway, which is like this crazy scientist who is altering genetics and and changing uh, the way people are looking. Right. And and she's kind of she kind of has this aura around her where she's like almost like the Beyonce of of the world where people are like fanatical about her. And then mm. he, on the other hand, he's like this like crazy character where everywhere he goes, he's like causing commotions and, and like women are like falling out over him. And it, there's a whole bunch of funny situations surrounding him. <laughs> like <laughs> women are going to be like passing out and like saying all kind of crazy comments whenever he's like enters a room. It's it. So it it, it kind of. Get, helps give you a lot of diversity in the characters and, and makes there there shouldn't be nobody you find that you can't find within the story that you can relate to. There should be mm-hmm. you should be able to find somebody that you can relate to. And that was my goal with it. Now, with so much creativity that goes into this story, that goes into this characters. Why why choose to share with other writers, share this opportunity with other writers to create in this world? Because one of the things I noticed is that I would be nervous. I would be nervous that, you know what I mean, that someone would take the story in the wrong direction, that I, the expectations, you know what I mean? My expectations, I think, if I had this story, would be too high to just let any and everybody dive into it. So what what made you comfortable enough to want to open it up in this way? Well, it was it was the initial plan and I actually backed off it a little bit, but my goal is and in working with this contest and working with people within this contest, I've learned that uh, I need to alter my goal a little bit. And so my goal is to actually have people have these characters like be the link to Resinio blanket, right? So you're creating, you're writing this story that is in the world of Resinio blanket. And so the way you can link the story is to either mention a character, you can like have an interaction with a character. So like you create your own character and you create his own, your, his own story. And then he's like, say for instance, he's walking down the street 
and he runs into Jay's and they have a conversation and they they talk. OK, so now your story is in Rosinio Blanket. So now we can collaborate and we can we can kind of mismatch what we what we what we're going to do. But I don't want to have people kind of decide where the story is going to go unless I have worked with them quite a bit and they can see and understand my vision because if you give too much power to somebody they can just take your story off a cliff and that is something I don't want but I do also right. want to have people have an easy way for people to be able to bring their story into the into the world and so I want them to be able to 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 use the characters but not to the point where, you know, I'm going to make this dramatic thing happen with this character. So I I encouraged on my contest um, that you only use the characters like in a in a in a uh, like a limited capacity, because because mm. if I'm taking the story in one direction and you're trying to take the story in another, they're they're going to clash. And the one that's going to win is, of course, going to be mine because I'm the author and I'm the owner. So, oh, right. <laughs> so in, in order to prevent that, just don't try not to, you know, over depend on any of these characters unless you're like, you know, writing about one specific day in the life of one of these characters versus, you know, trying to tell their whole life story. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Yeah, it, it can get pretty hard. How have the submissions been so far? Have you had there been any stories that you were impressed with? Some of them that you were like, oh, no, this ain't it. <laughs> like, <what> the- <laughs> right now, people are, are still writing them. So nobody has officially. Well, I've had one submission, but it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't nothing special. But um <laughs> <laughs> But um, I feel like I feel like um, is I actually I actually work with some of the writers, so I know some oh, of really? them. Yeah, I, I know some of them kind of have a, a a foothold on what the story is about, and so I know that those specific people will have a good tale to tell. But as far as everybody else. You know, I if if they're going to listen to this, I want to encourage them to, you know, reach out and send it in early so you can get an opinion and you can get, you know, some feedback on right. whether it's a, a a good path or maybe you may need to make a couple of changes to where it fits more. It's not it's it's less about me trying to, you know, correct your work or um trying to change your writing, but it does need to to fit within the story, right? So you can't start writing about, you know, this crazy event that one of these characters did and it ends up clashing with something that actually happens that I'm writing about. So Mm. so it can actually be used because if it clashes then i can't use it right exactly (laughs) (laughs) so it's 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 a tricky process um i'm I'm learning uh it's my first contest i hope to be doing a contest like this uh every quarter and so we're going to see how this one goes uh if we need to make any changes any suggestions they may have and kind of you know, continue to go from there. And if anybody listening wants to uh, start writing and submit a story, um, it's not close. It's not going to be the submissions aren't going to be closed until uh, May 15th, which is probably a reason why nobody has submitted anything yet because they're trying to, yeah, they still got a lot of time um, because I want to put the story out um, at the beginning of June. Okay. Now break down the submission requirements for the contest. Um, well, it's it's basically as long as it's in the world of Rosinio Blanket, then it's okay, right? So 
if you base it in a city in a residual blanket, if you see a character or mention a character, then we can correlate it to residual blanket. Any like if you're if you're using the lore from Rosinio Blanket and you write your own, you know, story, anything that links it to the world of Rosinio Blanket makes it OK. So it doesn't even have to be in the same time period. It doesn't even have to be in, in, in the same exact place. So I have I have lore pieces that describe the Holloway conglomerate. I have lore pieces that describe uh, 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 a woman ran society. I have I have lore pieces that describe uh, uh, the city, right? So you can go and look at that and find something that links it to Rosinio Blanket. And then once it's linked, then you can take it wherever you want to take it. And mm. if it works, then it has a lot of potential win. And, and what do they win if they win the contest? We have a hundred dollar grand prize, um, and then it is also going to be uh, featured in our on our uh, Instagram, and it will also be featured on our website, and we will also be making a cover for it. Ah, that's dope. Yeah. Now, who was your favorite character to create? Favorite? Uh, I don't know. I actually like them all. Maybe, maybe Pixie, just because she was the first. She was the first character you ever created. No, well, like three D wise, yes. Jay's was the, really Jay's was the first character for the story. Pixie was the first character I actually made in in like a three D in a three D uh, realm. Damn, that's dope. Yeah. <laughs> Now, which character, when creating these characters, which character surprised you the most? Like, which one, when you were done, you were like, damn. Like, I ain't even, <laughs> this came out better than I thought. Because some of them stand out, man. Some of them are so crazy. Uh-huh. Like, Priestess and Maya, like, that. That style is crazy, like, with the scarf and everything like that. Uh-huh. So, she, her story is actually, she's, she's like, um, almost like a little sister to Tetris. And so, she's, she kind of uh she's not even a priestess right she just grew up in like a, a church and that's where her and tetris used to play around together and she um she's she's albino so she couldn't go outside and she grew up in a like a rough city when and then tetris leaves and it, her 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 backstory is pretty crazy and uh mm. and and she ends up uh genetically altered too and you can't so with the the genetic alterations the these characters are meant to for it to be like less obvious i know right now the image of that i have on on tetris you can clearly tell and the one i have one heavy you can you can kind of tell just because of his ears but if you yeah. if, if his ears weren't like that you would barely be able to tell that he has the the head of a dog, right? If you were looking straight on and he didn't have those ears, you wouldn't even be able to tell. You'd just be like, he has a big mouth. Right. And then uh, Tetris, her, her image is actually different. So we've, we've done a lot of work on her because she, her, her character is very um, important to the story. So she looks a lot different than what this image I have up here, which reminds me I need to like re upload her images, but she looks, she looks a lot. She looks a lot more um, human like. So she, she has scales on her face, but it's, it's a lot less pronounced. Right. Mm. She, she just looks like a, a, a regular, you know, woman, but just she has like these these scales on her face because she's genetically altered. Her father actually genetic genetically altered her, and she was the first one. And then she just grew up to be this crazy genet geneticist and and turned it into uh, 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 this crazy following. Damn, that's crazy. So what's next after the contest? What's next for 
Resenio blanket? My goals for this year, um, one was to get on a podcast. So check that box. Uh, check that off. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another one was to uh, start going out into like um, like conventions and and bookstores and starting to to interact with potential customers face to face. Um, one, one of the critical, um, uh, uh, things that I feel like I need to do is interact with people more. Right. So a lot of the stuff I've been doing has been on the internet and now I need to take it to the, the actual people and start, start interacting with them. I got some advice. Oh, absolutely. Huh? I said, absolutely. It's, it's a different, different, a totally different hustle when you do that. <laughs> exactly. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it real. And so I got some advice from another person who was uh, writing and what she said was her best results were through interacting with her fans. Right. And so mm -hmm. I need to go out there and personally talk to these people and kind of interact with them and tell them about my story. So that way they can get interested and go to the website and, you know, do all this extra stuff. Um, uh, but I'm going to have a little, it's going to be a little bit of, of a spin on it because I'm not necessarily going to have, I'm not necessarily going to be giving out like books or anything. So instead of giving out books, I'm going to be giving out like, um, uh, like a card. It's going to be like a holographic card with a character on it and it's going to have a link to a, a, a digital copy of the story. Mm. So it's going to is I, I want it to be very uh, collector. So like if the only way you're going to be able to get this card is to come and meet me in person. Right. In person. See me, I stay there. You go again, man. <laughs> you above me. You be not at it. You go again, bro. That creativity, man. Yeah. <laughs> so that way, I mean, you'll you'll have something that only a limited amount of people are going to have. So if you if you're like this super fan and you're like you're like, man, I love this story. Let me go and and be the first person to ever like meet him and and pay for this card and blah 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 right so i even thought oh, yeah. i even thought about numbering them so if you if you come out and you, you you're the first person to ever buy one of these cards you're going to have it and it's going to have number 1 on it right so you'll have the mm. the very first um ever collector's card of resinio blanket and if you know we blow up like the the marvel universe then that number one is going to be crazy expensive. Like you can, you probably Work a lot of money. Exactly. <laughs> so that's, that's what, that's one of the things I, I want to be able to uh, get out there and, and, and interact with people and kind of give them the ability to, you know, have something that is going to be, you know, collectible, something it, it may, you know, link to a memory or whatever. And I, I think it'll be cool. Yeah, it'd be dope as hell. Yeah. Now, tell everybody where they can reach out to you, where they can contact you, where they can find the story of Resinio Blanket and how they can submit to the contest. So it's it's all easy. Uh our main our main hub is going to be on our website, www.resinioblanket.com. We're also on Instagram at Resinio Blanket. We're on Facebook at Resinio Blanket. We're even on Twitter at Resinio Blanket, but we don't really do too much on Twitter. Uh, we, we just got the name just because we don't want anybody else to have it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and so if you want to contact us there, you can contact us there. We, we still have, um, the ability to to get on there and and read whatever messages a person might have as far as the contest just get in touch with the, with us and we can shoot you the link we can shoot you the link to to the uh description and where all the information is we have it has all the information about the contest even ideas if you're you know stuck on what to write we even have ideas on what you could write about 
that'll be a good uh, way to to tell your story. Um, we're, we're trying to set it up to make it very easy. Um, you can submit it, submit your work uh, to our to our uh, uh, email or you can give us a link, whatever. Um, our email is Tucker Holloway CO at gmail.com. You can find it on our website in our about section. Um, yeah, just, just get into contact, get in contact with us and, and we'll respond. Nice. And this has been the Fiction Addiction Podcast, and this was Jakari Tucker. Jakari, we appreciate you stopping by, man. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This is my first one, man, so I'm going to be sharing it with a lot of people. Thank you for joining us on the Fiction Addiction Podcast. Make sure you visit fictionaddictionpodcast.com for links on everything we talked about today, as well as awesome resources, additional tips, and fiction addiction merchandise.